that. But it was, my smile was that I'm kicking your butt, you know what I mean? You land on Mars and now you gotta go, you know, find things. With this whole week, you're constantly worried that you're gonna miss that nugget of information. You're not gonna be there when something finally a little newsy breaks. The press conference, it's for television. It's for all the cameras and it's for, you know, so they can get their sound bites and their, you know, and have someone say something funny on the day. Larry's gonna be out there fighting too, we know that. Larry was a great champion. I said was. They get up there and invariably they say, oh, I'm looking for a great fight. I'm expecting a good fight. A real good fight. Uh, I respect my opponent well. I have a lot of respect for Larry Holm. You can't build a story off of that. You could, I suppose, but nobody would read it. You know. For me, the press conference starts after the, the sound bites, you know, after the TV. That's when we get our information. For in keeping Foreman alive, so to speak. The problem is it's only two guys to write about, you know. It's not like you're writing about teams. You can do a feature on the wing or the forward. Or, you know. So you can't help but get caught up promoting the fight. The purpose of the fighters' meeting is really to give you a base of information. You need to begin calling a fight with an expectation of what's going to happen. Uh, and, and that gives you something to argue with or against as you go along. So, Evander, now they're, they're like callers on radio shows and the occasional guy in a newspaper and Aaron who stands up at news conferences and they pick Larry to win the fight. Does that insult you at all? No. Even in a situation where you're sitting in a hotel room, looking at them, talking to them face to face, they give you body language cues that can help you to understand where they are mentally and emotionally and physically. Well, right now we're at the Sports Pavilion here in Las Vegas at Caesar's Palace. And we're going to go over the rules. The bell can only save you in the last round. There will be a few knockdown battles over here, and we'll see what's going to happen. Now we're going legality, lawyers, all the BS. We want Nevada rules to apply straight down the line. That may be all well and good, what he wants. What I want also has to be considered. For the heavyweight championship to be decided in three rounds, it's ludicrous. I didn't get anything. I, you know, uh, I think it's wrong. I mean, uh, Bob Arum, Bob Arum, the promoter. I mean, his point was, was wrong. And so we may end up very possibly with the same or more homes. Not the greatest title to have, promoter. I think, my God, this is a heavyweight championship of the world. I'll do every radio show, every television show, every camera that's in front of me. I'll do that. Promoters are not the most popular people in the world because people can press that button on their television set and order the fight. This is a big home run, this event. This event is approaching $70 million. Yeah. We'll take, we'll take slow sales like that all the time. Yeah. We'll... The only thing that's really real about this whole exercise is when the bell rings and the two fighters face each other. That part is real. One. One, two, three. Yes, Ross, I hear you very well. One. One, two, three. So coming up now, in a matter of minutes, HBO Sports World Championship Boxing brings you the heavyweight title fight between champion Evander Holyfield and 42-year-old former champion tonight and unlikely challenger Larry Holmes. We mentioned earlier it is a star-studded crowd among the many who have made the trek from Hollywood, Jack Nicholson and the mother of his two children, Rebecca Broussard. Seated near them in the crowd, far and away, Tom Cruise and his wife, Nicole Kidman. And there is Arnold Schwarzenegger with his wife, television journalist Maria Shriver, HBO star and movie star Lethal Weapon 1, 2, and 3's Danny Glover, many, many more as we get ready now for the entrance of former heavyweight champion Larry Holmes. And here comes the sport's latest boy wonder, Former world heavyweight champion Larry Holmes, more than seven years he held the title, and he defended it successfully 20 times before losing to Michael Spinks. That number, 20 successful title defenses, second only to the 25 title defenses racked up by Joe Lewis. You've often heard the expression how 
quickly they remember, they forget. Well, in Larry Holmes's case, it was how quickly they remember because just as soon as he beat Ray Mercer, everybody was reminded warmly of what a terrific fighter he really was over that seven year span. It takes an exceptional prize fighter with exceptional motivation and hang on to a title that long. And as soon as he beat Ray Mercer, he was installed as a top 10 contender by all three governing bodies whose belts are at stake tonight. George Foreman, what goes through Larry Holmes' mind now as he makes his way right, towards the next there. big moment in his long career? It hasn't been about a lot of practicing. It's about rehearsal. You do it every day. Have I left any little sh soft shoe out? He's ready, I think, because the rehearsing is over. In his mind, you got to think the rehearsing is over. It must be a really nice moment for him because he never expected to have this again in his life. I guess it's every performer's dream to get back there one more time and have the crowd erupt around him. Sometimes it's like that, but when you think about getting in the ring with a little vicious fighter like Evander Holyfield, the crowd is the last thing you want to think about. <laughs> But Larry's critics would say that he has a unique capacity not to enjoy the moments he most ought to enjoy. And indeed, there have been signs this week that he isn't able to follow George Foreman's example of having fun as he said he would. Well, unfortunately, Larry, uh, following Muhammad Ali, felt he had to promote his fights. And he he never had Ali's charm, and he came off as a kind of a grump. All right, that's it. And uh, maybe he should have had his tongue circumcised somewhere along the way. set of boxing characters surrounds Larry as he makes his way into the spotlight. Not least among them, the noted Harold Smith, promoter who once turned the heavyweight division on its ear for a brief period of time, using money that turned out not to be all his. To put it mildly. <laughs> the crowd cheers for Larry Holmes who won a lot of hearts as you said Larry with the victory over Mercer 54 wins and three losses 48 of those wins in his first career the losses two of them to Michael Spinks one to Mike Tyson in his first abortive comeback January of 1988 and he is 6 and 0 in this latest comeback including the victory over Mercer that vaulted him into this position. If he won, he would be the oldest man ever to win the heavyweight championship, but he is not the oldest ever to have challenged for the crown. That honor fell to Archie Moore back in 1955. And Moore knocked Marciano down in that fight and very nearly pulled it off. And if we can get something like that tonight, I'll take it. There you see the oldest to have won the championship. Walcott was 37 when he took it from Ezra Charles in 1951. Ali was 36 when he beat Leon Spinks in Ali Spinks too, and James Bonecrusher V was the third on the list for his one-round knockout of Tim Witherspoon. Here is the champion in his third defense of the undisputed heavyweight championship, and most of his critics would say none of them have been truly legitimate defenses in the sense that he has fought two 42-year-old former champions now in Holmes and Foreman, and in the middle defense, of course, he wound up fighting Burt Cooper after having first been contracted to fight Mike Tyson. Tyson fell out. It was going to be Francesca Damiani. Damiani dropped out. Cooper, on six days' notice, gave Holyfield hell in his hometown of Atlanta. And I, and I feel somehow that Evander has gone through some sort of crucible since that fight. Uh, he talked about getting out of the business. Uh, he was uh, sick of the criticism that was aimed at him because he happened to be uh, hurt in that fight as if no other heavyweight champions were ever hurt in a big fight. And then his uh, brother was shot dead in a, in a terrible uh, accident. And somehow he seems to have galvanized his forces, that he understands he's been dealt a hand. You're only here once. You ought to play it to the hilt. 
George Foreman, he knows that the critics scoff at him there, for his opposition, and he says it doesn't bother him. Do you believe him? No way. You can only take so much criticism out there. We all got feelings, and his feelings have been critically hurt time and time again. People are criticizing his opponents, criticizing his size. Listen, he's got something to prove and a lot. Is that good for him or does that create too much pressure? That's not good at all because when you get in that ring, all you should be thinking about is winning every round of every every round of the fight. Try to win the fight. Don't win hard. 27 wins, no losses. Most of those victories as a cruiserweight before his conversion to the heavyweight division within the past three and a half years. And now we take a look at the tail of the tape for what many would call the bionic heavyweight against the blob. Holmes weighed in at a paunchy 233. Holyfield rock solid at 210. And I should make this point about Holyfield at 210. Muhammad Ali also came out of the Olympics as a light heavyweight. When he fought as a champion at his best, at his peak years, he weighed between 0208, 212, 213. So 210 is not exactly a small heavyweight. Punch that numbers, Larry. Now let's take a look at some of their numbers, uh, a profile of how they fight, how active they generally are. There you see Holyfield uh, and his numbers against Cooper and against George here. Different numbers against different types of fighters. Holmes has been garroting, gadgeting down his numbers of punches. He's a little bit more defensive, a little bit more selective in the number of punches he throws. And of course, his main weapon is that big jab and Holyfield however has a jab of his own and he would be very content tonight to match his jab against Holmes. Rules of the bout from our unofficial ringside scorer Harold Letterman. Larry Holmes and Evander Holyfield will fight tonight using the rules of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Ten point must system. No standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. You can be saved by the belt in a last round only, and only the referee can stop the fight. The doctor can't stop it. And, Jim, as a result of that tremendous controversy at yesterday's rules meeting, we're going to use the Nevada rule, which says that in case of a cut caused by an accidental headbutt, we will go to the scorecards. If the three rounds have been completed, only three rounds. Before that, it's a technical draw. All right. Let's go up the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, right now for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, main event monitor for the top Frank and Paul. The undisputed on Present the featured of the evening. This bout is dedicated to the memory of Chuck Minker. It is sanctioned by the WBA, the WBC, and the IBF with the approval and sanctioning of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman Luther Mack, Commissioners Nat Karasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Bruce Lane, and Dr. James Nade. Chief Inspector Mark Ratner. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Flip Pomansky. Attending physicians Dr. William Berliner and Dr. Robert Voy. The timekeepers, Mike Lachella, counting for the knockdown seconds, Al Bicek. The scoring for this bout will be done on a 10-point must system, and the three judges assigned ringside are Carol Castellano, Glenn Hamada, and Chuck Jampa. And once the bell rings, the man in charge of all the action working for the 66th time in a world title bout, Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing their white trunks with red trim and weighing in at 233 pounds. His overall career totals are 54 victories against only three defeats with 37 KOs to his credit. For seven and a half years, he ruled the division, making 15 defenses of the title. Tonight, he returns to Caesar's Palace where he won it all in 78. Ladies and gentlemen, from Easton, Pennsylvania, the challenger, former heavyweight champion of the world, the Easton assassin, Larry. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with white trim, weighing in at an even 210 pounds. This 1984 Olympic bronze medalist was the first of the great 84 team to win a world title, becoming cruiserweight champion in only his 13th bout as a professional. 
Since moving up to the heavyweight division, he's maintained a perfect record, which now totals 27 victories without a defeat. 22 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, the two-time world champion and current undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Real Deal. Field. All right, gentlemen, this is for the championship of the world. We've been through all the instructions, picked a clean fight, but test out at all times. Any questions from Mr. Holmes or his corner? Any questions, Mr. Holyfield or his corner? Let's get it on. Okay, baby, let's go. Jim, the odds going into this fight were about four and a half to five to one in favor of the champion. In my book, if I were making the odds, I think the odds that Holmes has to overcome is closer to 100 to one. The question is, can he make a fight of it? Can he give us a good show? Well, for round one, Holyfield told us yesterday that he wants Holmes to come to him because he feels his best offense is is not war an attack and press as some people believe he should but that's what got him in trouble against Bert Cooper and if you saw Holmes Mercer you know that Larry would like to stand on the ropes position himself in such a way as to invite Holyfield to come to him and use the jab to score Holmes already established that he's going to back move backwards. And that's something Holyfield is going to have a hard time dealing with because he is a good kind of country. Larry Holmes is one of the best of all time at fighting while moving backward, isn't he, George? And, that, and he's, his feet are planted well. He's not going to have any problem doing so. Holyfield should hit him hard and move backwards, make him come. Make Larry come to him. Holyfield trying to establish the jab. He didn't use it much against Cooper. He has been told that he must use it the way he did against Buster Douglas to be at maximum effectiveness. Snap that jab! Snap that jab! Larry Holmes cocks and fires the right hand, but it was a little short. When you're older, you try to hit the younger guys hard to make them come. And that's what Larry's trying to do. Holyfield's looping right hand was slow and late. First punch to the body is a right hand to the rib cage by Holyfield. And you have to wonder how well Holmes will be able to take it to the body if Evander gets there. Holmes wincing slightly as Evander gets to the rib cage with the right hand again. Not many combinations in round one. Holmes landing almost exclusively with the jab. That canvas is going to have a lot of effect. It's hot. And as the night grows on, if you move around a lot, the heat is going to draw from the leg. And of course, Holyfield is regarded as one of the best conditioned heavyweights of all time. And Holmes' age and weight speak for themselves. Holmes got Holyfield following him around the ring already, so he's at home. Does it in the gym with sparring partners daily. Temperature at ringside, 88 degrees right now. Both men have worked up a healthy sweat as round one wanes. Mills Lane telling Holmes to keep his punches up. Holmes has been hurt by left hook. And Holyfield misses one right there. punch of the round right at the end. Give him a little bit more. Bucket, bucket. Oh, no. I got you. I got you. Give him a little bit more angle. Grease. Grease. Let's take a look at that quick little right hand at the end of the round if we have it. Didn't do much damage, but it got in there. Larry in the corner, looking to catch Evander, and it landed flush, flush on the nose. He can't throw his right hand. He got his right hand busy. 
Okay. Beautiful, but if you're getting good rhythm out there, good rhythm out there. Okay. Second shot. Let's go, Izzy. Oh. Look at that rhythm, man. Get that rhythm. Just hold up those hands. Come on, Lou. Only 24 punches thrown by Holmes in round one, probably not enough. He needs to throw between 40 and 50 to be effective. Against Mercer, he landed nearly two-thirds of the punches he threw. Holyfield is, to say the least, a more elusive target. Holyfield has planned the puncher in this fight. He's trying to land one shot as though he's the bigger guy. That won't work. the corner he likes and now the question is will Evander be able to get through home defenses and make him pay for standing still in a corner and Evander starts working to the body something Mercer didn't do Holyfield has not yet been the kind of fighter who can be effective when a guy against the rope he needs leverage and room good right hand by Holmes two good left hands by Holyfield Evander starting to land the left hook inside and there's another and Holmes comes with an uppercut and a right hand and briefly stuns Holyfield, but Holyfield comes right back to the body. champion of the world, you got nothing to prove. They could have fought that round in a telephone booth. and punching at the same time. It's the kind of fight he needs to preserve his energy. Got away with a left hook to the under the body. But I don't get any sense at all that his punches are even stinging Holyfield. No, but they're scoring. Both fighters scored a lot in that particular round, fought exclusively in the corner just above us. begins, Holyfield is back in the more comfortable environment of the center of the ring. But can he keep Holmes there? It's 1974. I'm heavyweight champ of the world, and I'm trying to take it from Muhammad Ali by following him around the ring, seeing that Evander Holyfield is having the same complex. So you see 
shades of the rope-a-dope in Holmes' strategy. That's correct. You're a champion of the world. Let the other guy take it from you. Holyfield is using his jab more in this round as Georgie Benton, his trainer, instructed instead of just winging punches. And that is a more effective strategy when you have a fighter on the ropes. Well, there's got to be an enormous temptation against the stationary target to just go in and wail away the way Vander did in round two. That's right. Larry is taking one inch away from the ropes. He jabs and goes back. Solid right hand by Holyfield over the top. And again, Holmes suddenly unable to defend against right hand leads. Third one missed. Two most effective punches of the bout so far for Holyfield. Same right hand that Mike Tyson hit Larry Holmes with about three or four years ago. No, a lot of people would say not the same right hand that Mike Tyson hit him with. Yes, but that's, Almost. that's been the punch, the big punch that Larry Holmes was always a little vulnerable, vulnerable to because he throws the jab so often. And occasionally his opponent will time that jab and come over. Witness his knockdowns at the hands of Ernie Shavers and Ronaldo Snipes, both with the right hand. And later Tyson, of course. Holmes seems to function good when he's hurt, which is a rarity with fighters. That was the great thing about Larry Holmes. He had a great left hand, great legs, but a great fighting heart as exhibited by his ability to take a punch and keep coming back. Well, I'll tell you who else seems to function pretty well when he's hurt, and that's Evander Holyfield. <laughs> no doubt about it. His recovery against Cooper was as blindingly rapid a recovery as you'll ever see by a heavyweight who was out on his feet. Holmes had a problem with his vision a little bit. Holmes cracking the counter right hand and landing it twice. Holyfield comes with his own right and misses. Holmes comes back and dominates the exchange. Larry landing at will with the right hand. And now Evander Holyfield goes back to the body. Evander Holyfield, those left hooks he's landing now are really hurting because they're landing close to the ribs of Larry. Hand. Back him up with that left jab. You got to step in with the left jab when you're up against the rope. Give him an angle and step in. You got him reaching around you, Larry. Straight punches going to beat him to the punch. Now let's take a look at an x-ray of those right hands. There was a big right hand. And here comes the next one. Followed up. Larry keeping his hands low. Holyfield waiting patiently. And bang, there it comes again. Take a look at it from another angle. Same result. Good picture. Larry Holmes always took a big punch. He was always. trying to roll that right hand, as a matter of fact. Well, you heard the advice in Holmes' corner from trainer Donald Turner. Evander is winging his punches from the side, comes straight up the middle against it. to end round three. Now he begins round four with caution, sticking only a couple of jabs as Evander dances around the ring looking for an opportunity to get next to it. Right hand by Holyfield, a little short. Holmes will appreciate him throwing those wild right hands. He functioned better getting out of the way of wild right hands. But as great as Larry is with the jab, he's not quick with the counter left hand. He'd really that's, rather bring the right. That's true. He, got, he hurts his right hand a lot. That right hand stays hurt. Get that hand closed. Get on the elbow right there, man. Make the jab. Again, again, again. That's straight. Again, again. Left hand was blocked. Holy he went down to the body and exit. George, earlier to this show you said Larry was going to try to fight one minute of the round that's exactly what he's doing maybe even a half a minute he's hardly throwing any punches he's trying to get Holyfield to come to him he's playing all defense and hopes to flurry and steal the round honestly and honestly Holyfield is trying power punching let me tell you he's a bit too small for that he's got to use quickness 
throwing shots to the temple and under the chin. So he should be boxing Larry rather than trying to wail away at him in there. That's right, because the legs and the heat, you're in the desert. You gotta preserve every little bit of water you got. But of course, Evander is bound to believe that conditioning is his big against but when you see the cuts in his body, that means a lack of water. It's okay anywhere but in the desert. So you're saying that for these conditions at this moment, Larry, Larry's is the better body. That's right. He's got the round body. It's a lot of water there. What are you Other things, too. Maybe some beans and rice, too. Larry says he doesn't eat steak every night. Our guess is he could afford it if he wanted to. Big left hand by Holyfield again. Now let's see if Holmes tries to steal the last 30 seconds of the round. Trading punches, one for each. Right hand by Holmes, landed one more time. Holyfield comes right back. And again, Holmes lands the right as Holyfield backs away. So once again, Larry Holmes packages his most effective punching of the round in the last 20 seconds. Put up there. Hey, yeah. now listen. Everyone will be there. You gotta be there. All right, Harold Letterman, how do you see the first four rounds of the fight? Larry, 39, 37. Three rounds to one of Vander Holyfield. Larry, I just think Evander's winning this fight on his power shots. Taking Larry Holmes into the ropes, landing that big right hand. I just don't think Larry's doing enough. Uh, I like what Larry did in the second round. In the second round, he fought up against the ropes, and, and he threw punches and landed and won the he round. But the other three, he, he just time. didn't do He's enough. His punches is getting wider and wider. Shorten up on your punches. And throw him, try to throw four or five punch combinations and move from that spot. Come on. Now listen, when you get close, hit him on the arms and the shoulders. You gotta go two hands. You gotta go two hands. Come on. Let me see him. I don't get a hot end. Don't get up no more. Let me push you. Well, you heard the signature advice of George Benton. Yes. He loves George Foreman to ask his fighters to hit their opponents on the arms and the shoulders. Effective. Yeah. You know, it would have been good if you were talking to Rocky Marciano, who had hammers in his fist. But when you're not, you're talking to a guy who's basically a sharp puncher. What damage can he do by hitting this guy on those big arms, but wear himself down? Maybe you should talk to Benton about it sometime. He's a huge believer in that. Marciano could crack your elbow. Holyfield again chasing Holmes and looking for a chance to go inside against him. Holmes looking for a corner to rest him. Larry likes to use the ropes and the corner post as a third leg. It balances him, gives him extra support, makes it easier to take the opposition's punches. Now he's got Holyfield afraid to jail, thinking he's going to hit him with a counter right hand. Holyfield should just throw wild shots just for a couple of rounds, mess his antennas up. It's fascinating to me that a Larry Holmes, who seemed to have so much trouble releasing the right hand against Michael Spinks six and seven years ago, is quick with it now. Well, Spinks was moving away from him, Jim. That's why. Spinks was the, the counterpuncher in that fight uh, and was able to do to, tr to do what Larry is trying to do to home to Holyfield here, here now. He's trying to make Holyfield do most of the right hand. That's right. Outstanding right hand by Holmes against Holyfield as Evander was coming in. But again, Evander steps right through it and back inside. The thing with Larry Holmes, he's trying to use that right hand not as a knockout shot, but as a punishing, scare you tactic so he can relax in that ring. And he landed again, and now Holyfield steps forward with a left. But you're right, George. Larry seems to have taken away Evander's will to jab him. Vander just pawing with the jab there, and then he stepped up and fired the body shot. If you're a great Joe Frazier smoking Joe Frazier, you want a guy to fight on the ropes like that. But when you're a master boxer, you've got to bring this guy to the middle of the round. This has been a good round for Larry Holmes, who just landed a solid uppercut moments ago. Holyfield hurts Larry every time you hit him with that left hook. time it is Holmes with the left hook to the body and Holyfield ducked away from the right hand. Holmes misses the right. If 
Vander with the left of the rib cage, another left of the body. Holmes looking down here and grinning at George Foreman. your fraternity brother. You scared me. <laughs> Listen. All you gotta do is give him an angle. He's reaching. Shot. Gotcha. Six round coming up. You got long right there, huh? It ain't long. Listen, start stepping to him with that jab. Touching him, touching him. Walk him down. Be careful you don't run into nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, that that is, just give me that jab. Yeah. All right, now look, drink, drink this water, drink this water. You got the mouthpiece? Mouthpiece. Georgie Benton advising Evander Holyfield to throw more jabs. He's only averaging 16 jabs per round. He felt coming into this fight that he could out jab the old jabber. It's called jabber wacky, Jim. That's <laughs> what happened when you hire the same old sparring partners over and over. You do the same old thing in the gym, although you, have, you got a lot of rounds, but you're not in shape to go foul with jabbing. You're going to have to cross that leg over a little bit and move out of your octagon. Down. Holyfield is trying to give Benton the jab, and it set up the chance to land the right hand. There's the jab from Holyfield, and he's landing it. If he goes back to that, he can turn the momentum more back in his direction. No, he's going to get in trouble trying that jab, but sooner or later, Holmes is going to invite him into the right hand. You've got to pull Larry Holmes to you if you are going to Holyfield. Right hand again by Holyfield. But how, do, grins at how do you pull a, a, a classic counterpuncher into you if he doesn't want to come, George? You give him an inch at a time. You hit him and you move away an inch. You hit him and move away an inch. And finally he sees, hey, where's the rope that was supposed to be behind my back? It's not there. You don't do it all at once. Hey, guys, with two guys who prefer counterpunching in there, we had suspicions we'd be looking at a very dull fight. It hasn't been that bad so far. A great fight. Holyfield has really been a good aggressor. I didn't think he could do it. Do you think it's the right thing for him to do? No, well, he doesn't. He doesn't know how to do it, but he's he's creating a fight for the fans. And that's, you got to do that. If people pay the money. You got to give them a fight. When we spoke to Evander yesterday, it was clear if you read between the lines that he was worried about a dull fight, and he wanted to be sure there would be something for the fans to remember here. Two right hands to the body by Holyfield. The first one was a damaging blow. We should keep in mind that Holyfield is the champion, he is the aggressor, in close rounds, that's going to be to his favor. He's getting smart now. He's starting to turn Larry Holmes and drive him alongside the ropes. Right hand by Holmes, measuring Evander as he comes forward. to the body and a right and another left by Holyfield. Good round for the champion this time around. This has been the bobbing, dancing, jabbing Evander Holyfield of the Buster Douglas fight. A night he won the heavyweight title. Bills Lane again, cautioning Holmes to keep him up. Jab, jab. Holyfield fighting a George Benton architected round. That's and a left and a right. I felt that that was the best round that he finally found the rhythm he should be in against this kind of a crafty opponent. No doubt about it, he picked up the pace a little bit. He stopped trying to use jabs, any kind of punch with it. Right on the eye. Right over here on the eye. Just over here. I didn't see the butt. Here, here, look right on the eye. I didn't see the butt. Oh, confused right over there. There is a bad cut on the right eye of Evander Holyfield. Lou Dubin is claiming that it was a butt. A bad cut 
along the right you, eyebrow you got of the champion. You see how you were boxing? And they are hot. It was just not boxing like that. Just stick him and stab him. Stick him and stab him. It was, a, it, was a, it was the right side of that right glove. He caught him part of the elbow. Part of the elbow. Yep, there you go. Good call, George Foreman. Elbow on the eyebrow. That's why Mills Lane said, I didn't see the butt. But it was actually an uh, 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 honestly thrown punch. Well, one of the best cut men in the business, Ace Murata, is the man who worked on it in Holyfield's corner, but you can see that the right eye is already badly damaged. Holmes had better not get overconfident because this guy... Oh, Holyfield is turning his face. Uh, he's in trouble, George. Holmes better not start that. The blood flowing across Evander's right eye. It appears to be compromising his vision. In the sixth round, he landed 59% of his punches, but he'll be a different fighter now. Now, what's the danger for Holmes, George? To start getting overconfident, going for that eye, and this guy can throw a good shot, a good counter right hand, catching Larry reaching in. cut man ace Murata that it is quote a very bad cut and the crowd is starting to chant larry 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 maybe they think the punch caused that cut well whatever caused it this is an opportunity for holyfield to show his championship medal big gun big time. when you're a young fighter undefeated things like cuts it goes deep into your soul you think maybe the stars the moon and the universe has turned against me he's going back to the jab now it seems to me george that larry's job here is to flick the jab flick the jab flick the jab constantly into evander's eyes no the jab is on the wrong side because if he goes reaching with that jab too much on the left side of evander holyfield's face he's gonna get caught with that left hook that evander's been trying hard desperately to land all night if it was on his right side, it would have been left side, it would have been better. So he should forget the cut and just fight his fight. Go continue to fight your fight. Occasionally, when he bumps into your elbow, the cut will open more. The heat in Las Vegas, Nevada, the desert would make you bleed. All of a sudden, you're not losing water, but you're losing blood. 40 seconds from now, Ace Murata will get a full minute to try to do some repair on the right eyelid of Evander Holyfield. A deep gash all the way across the eyelid. And suddenly we have drama in the dust in Las Vegas. Holyfield pounding to the body with urgency and desire. When you're bleeding like that and you're throwing hard shots, it only weakens you more and more and more. It's like that of a bull fighter. After he's wounded the bull, the more he charged, the greater and weaker he gets. There you see the right elbow in an honestly thrown effort to punch by Larry Holmes caught Evander Holyfield across the brow. That missed punch has given new life to Holmes because whatever he thought before, now he's looking and saying, five more rounds of this, I could pull this thing off. That's right, Holyfield is fighting now to defend his, not his title, but his eye because if the fight is stopped because of that cut, it would be a technical knockout victory for Larry Holmes. He would not have to go to the scorecards. And with Larry Holmes, he's never been known as a left hooker to open that cut up even more. 
So the left hook is the punch he would have to have in his repertoire to attack that gut. And he doesn't have a left hook. And Holmes is, is taunting and talking to Holyfield and trying to get him to come in and commit himself. Holyfield ducks and faints and lands a left and a right. He had a pretty good round last round, fighting with the cut, bleeding. Right now, Murata has done his job, and Holyfield has vision in there as he goes in and tries to attack. Every time Holyfield throws a good right hand, his body, his body follows him in, too. So he's getting a bit weak. You think of all the 15-round championship fights that Holmes was involved in, he doesn't get as much opportunity in a 12-round fight to make that cut work for him. Now, George, you were bleeding a lot more blood in your last fight than Holyfield is now. Did that weaken you? Because you came on at the end. You know, it doesn't weaken me because of the round body type. You got a lot of water in there. So what you're saying is it will hurt Evander a lot more than it would have hurt you or Holmes. That's correct. I must admit I never heard that one before. Whenever you can show cuts in your body, that means that's not a whole lot of liquid to me. George has a wealth of unique theories on the sport, Larry. All of the bodybuilders know that. You're saying his skin is too wrapped too tightly around his skeleton. It takes a certain lifestyle to do that. He's drinking a lot of liquids, so won't get it. Now, hamburgers on the other end give you another look. <laughs> then another round in which Holyfield has landed the more effective punches. Oh, it's, it's interesting. Holmes is hardly doing anything here. I mean, I don't know if he's waiting for, Holy, for Holyfield to make a mistake, but he's not doing enough to, to win a round, even if he rallies uh, in, in the 15 seconds or so. He's just not doing anything. He thinks the cutout means he's ahead. Holyfield dropping his In hand. the last two rounds, it wouldn't appear to be the case. Holyfield starting to bounce around and move it. Holyfield is using his superior footwork and speed. Get around the ring, make Larry come to him, and score with his opportunities. Left hook scores. It's been another pretty good round for Evander Holyfield fighting with one eye. Sit down over here. Come on, put that up. Put that up. Okay. Now the jab is working this way. You understand? Now keep the jab going. Down here. Come on, baby. Nice job. Bender, you're way ahead on this here. You're going to box this guy out, smart this guy. Listen. Keep him in the center of the ring. Right. Keep the jab. Hey, man. When the guy goes to the room, sits back off. Okay. You understand? Now keep him in the center because he can't do nothing to you when you're circling. Quickly, you how do you see it through eight rounds? Larry, 78, 74, six rounds to two. 78, 74, six rounds to two, Evander Holyfield. I think that Evander Holyfield is the aggressor. No, uh, all, he's leading all the way, just taking a fight to Larry Holmes. It's no Put question in my in mind that and push him back uh, Evander now. Holyfield's got to be hit with this left hook. Uh, I agree with you. I also have it six rounds to two, Harold. In that round, Holyfield threw 30 jabs. And what made him do it? I don't think it was Georgie Benton. I think it was the cut on his eye that made him finally found out, find out how he has to fight Larry Holmes. It's the urgency of the situation. Well, some guys get wild in urgency. He got disciplined when he got urgent. There's no doubt he's been the whole has got a great heart. I mean, he's intending to fight all the way. Good right and left in the middle of the ring by Holyfield. Still in the center of the ring, and this is ideal territory for Evander Holyfield to press his advantages. Ever since the cut arrived, Holmes has abandoned his strategy of standing in the corner and on the ropes. And I, I can tell you this, he's, th he's thinking he's ahead, though. That's a great mistake because the rounds keep kicking on. At some point, he's got to throw left hook, get this thing going. Witness the fact that the judges saw your punches against Alex Stewart even when you were a bloody mess. And that's what you gotta do. You gotta keep things going. Stay ahead. Bloody mess. He didn't look good. <laughs> that was chopped liver. <laughs> a lunging attempt by Holyfield. He slips and falls. The increasingly Holmes loving crowd gets a moment of pleasure. And Evander's smiling about it. Needn't, needn't mention how much energy that takes from you. Of course, it was ruled a slip, not a knockdown. And still Larry Merton.
watch it. Holyfield jabbing and dominating. Because Larry Holmes really doesn't want to lead at all. He doesn't want to lead at all. He wants Evander to do all the leading, hopefully to get something in there to look spectacular, but he's really not doing enough to win the championship. What he's doing enough of right now is to go the distance, which is an achievement in itself. I guess the question is going to come up soon, George. If Larry just goes the distance, would you fight him? You know, Larry, we'll answer that later. Yep. I think the last thing that Larry Holmes and George Foreman want to think about now is a fight. He's in one up for his life right now. Holmes landed a left hook that seemed to bother Holyfield around the eye. He wins. Finally threw a left hook. Yep. But we won't see many of them, George. It's not natural for him to throw. And if he had a left hook in his repertoire, this fight could have been ended. Yeah, he'd be in big business right now. As I said, blood from the cut above Holyfield's eye, but still Evander moving, using his feet, keeping Holmes in the center of the ring, ducking under that right hand, and landing the more effective punches. I think what happened is Larry trained so hard to effectively land good right hand, he didn't even concentrate on the left hook. Now he just hasn't got one to end that fight with. In his best day, George, he didn't really like to throw the left hook. His left jab was just so good, he felt it was too risky a punch. round coming up. Just a three-round fight, an amateur fight coming. You got to step to your left and hit him with that. You got the shot. You got the shot. Quarter. Give All you have to do. You understand? You're the champion. You got to prove nothing, right? You fight a smart fight. I got it. I got it. I got it. That is what you do. Now, that was a good round. You jabbed him to death. Keep, keep it going. Okay, baby. So as long as, no, as long as you're moving around, the guy can't do nothing to you. Common sense right, would, 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 would make you keep doing it, right? Step to your left and throw it. Well, you heard Georgie Benton's advice. Obviously good advice to win the title. The man's getting $18 million to defend his title, and if he wins it, he'll make another $18 million the next time. So that's good advice to win the fight. But I thought I saw on Evander's face a little bit of disgust. He doesn't want to just win. He wants to fight as well as he can fight and look better as the heavyweight champion. Well, he got an unbelievable bad break as the cut was opened, as you saw, by an elbow. But for the first time since the cut arrived three rounds ago, I felt there was a sense of calm in Evander's corner. Murata's hands are no longer shaking as he applies the grease to the cut. Well, they panic initially. They didn't even get the stool out on time. Right hand over the top by Holyfield lands. Holmes goes back to standing against the ropes. And now Larry comes back to the center of the ring where he's not as effective. It's up to a cut man to give you that confidence. Hey, I don't want to see any blood going down this guy's face to make him scary. The cut man is doing a great job. In contrast to what happened to Mike Tyson in Tokyo against Buster Douglas, where the corner got rattled and didn't help Tyson. And they did not really have a cut man there. There are about five great ones in the sport. Ace Murata, Eddie Aliano, Percy Richardson, a couple of others. It behooves you to be sure you have one of those guys for just these moments. Now Holyfield is in charge. He's making home charge him a little bit. Home doesn't step out. Well, if you're a betting man now, you begin to look for a 12-round decision. And that alone will probably further tarnish Holyfield's reputation as champion. He's got to understand to win is a great thing. Holyfield is starting to breathe a little bit. He's keeping his mouth open, mouth teeth extended. The effort for Holyfield is 
just in the fact that he's throwing more punches than Larry Holmes. Holmes has been accurate with his, but up until the last 10 seconds or so, hadn't been throwing very many of them. I saw a sneak. I saw Holyfield sneakily bend his knees just a little bit as though the punches got to him. Just. A relatively slow 10th round, and you don't get the sense that Holmes has anything new to bring to this. And I don't want you to fight your fight, baby. Sit down. All right, now listen. They got the boots, Stay busy right? with that jab. You understand? Stay busy with the jab. Don't stand still. All right, right. right. No problem. And, and, and bring him off them ropes. You understand? Yeah. All right. No, sir. My piece, my piece. Drink a little of that water. Drink a little of that water. Drink it up, baby. Drink it up. It's 11th round, baby. 11th okay. round. 11th round. 11th round. Have you carry your hands good now. Yeah. Harold, give us your score through 10. Larry, 97-93, seven rounds to three. Evander Holyfield, what a commanding four-point lead. I don't think there's any way Evander can lose this fight unless he gets knocked out. I mean, Evander's absolutely complete charge. Land in the clean of harder shots. The aggressor, uh, good ring generalship. He's just winning the fight. Three belts. Call, let's go. Donald Water, it's 11th round. Box this guy. Move him around. Come on, this guy. 14 months ago, it was George Foreman who went the distance with champion Evander Holyfield at age 42. And now, if he can stand six more minutes, Larry Holmes will have accomplished the same thing. What I'm curious about is if Larry Holmes is going to come out and really try to end this fight dramatically, or if he's going to be content to be a good loser. Holyfield is, one right hand. Holyfield is actually being hurt by those right hands. I think the first one really got him, George. That's right, and he's not, he's trying to act along with it, but he's hurt. And in the past, the Duga corner, all the fighters seem to get a little itchy in the last round. They don't seem to protect themselves. You're thinking of Melzer Taylor against Julio Cesar Chavez. And maybe Holyfield against you. He gave you a chance or two in the 12th. Well, that's right. Home is awful tough. I think he's standing straight up, trying to deliver right hand. Good left hook by Holyfield, and he steps back away from Holmes' jab. Another left hook by Holyfield. And a right hand. These are accurate punches by Holyfield, and they underline two things. Number one, he still feels pretty good. Number two, he does not have the kind of punching power necessary to hurt big heavyweights when he lands one or two or three shots. But you just can't get overconfident now with him because you come forward, he'll meet you with a good right hand. To the body with the left. Holmes has stopped punching for the moment. He wants one good right hand that he feels can drop Evander Holyfield. And I don't understand that. Holmes now ducking away from the body punches. Evander firmly in command in this round after having taken two right hands to open it. Larry stands at the rope, says, come to me. And Evander says, no dice. You come to me, big man. Larry Holmes wants to win the title. He's the one who's got to go get it. Well, does he want to win the title, or did he want to collect $7 million? Well, I think he's fought better than a lot of people expected tonight. You can't say he came here not to win, but right now he's got an opportunity, and he's got to take advantage of it or go home. Good left hand by Holyfield. Holmes had been missing with the jab. Evander stepped in and pounded it. Left and a right by Holyfield. Holmes lands another right, and that one was flushed. The second right hand caught Evander right on the jaw. And did nothing. Yep. Time, time, time. Neutral corner. Larry Holmes needs a glove to be laced. At this time, I should point out that there are three Georgians in the ring now. How about that for trivia? All right, here we go. Holmes, Holmes was born in Cuthbert, Georgia. Cut the tree! Van Holyfield right is from the Atlanta area. And the referee, Mills Lane, okay, is from the right. Savannah area. All right, here we go. All right, time. All right, here we go. Oh, man. from above the right eye of Holyfield. Only 10 seconds to go in the round, though. Then only the 12th will remain. Interesting round to score. Both fighters landed effective blows. 
Maybe Larry got the better of it. Straight right hand by, by Larry Holmes. Quick right hand, not all of his body into it, but a good effective punch. Just not effective enough against the stop chin and heart of the champion. Three minutes, champ. Three minutes. Walk him down and punch him. You, you can do it. Last round. Seven rounds to four. Evander hey, Holyfield. I think Holmes needs a knockout to win the fight. Evander Holyfield's tenth fight as a heavyweight. His third defense of the heavyweight championship he won from Buster Douglas. He has been fighting for five rounds now with a vicious cut all across his right eyelid and the trickle of blood begins again with two and a half minutes to go. Larry Holmes looking for a big right hand which might win him back the title he lost to Michael Spinks in 1985. Spot an excellent fight, leaving Larry Holmes, but against the wrong kind of guy. Only had a left hook. Holyfield bouncing and moving. Trying to use his superior conditioning and energy to sew up the last round and eliminate any questions that might still exist in the minds of the judges. A much busier Holyfield now than we saw in round 11. Second time in 14 months, though, he's been taken into the 12th round by a 42-year-old former champion. And this will do little, even if he wins it, to enhance Evander Holyfield's reputation as a heavyweight champion. That must await further title defenses. And his corner sound like amateur cheerleader. Three minutes to go. Three minutes to go. Crowd coming alive with a minute and a half to go. Their sentiments clearly with Larry Holmes. He never got this kind of adulation from a Vegas crowd when he was defending the title 20 consecutive times. Seems that Holyfield is going to have to get some gray hairs just to get the crowd on his side. Holmes landed another right hand, and again, Holyfield steps forward in return. A left hand by Holmes. And I think he won the 11th round. If the old man wins the 12th, maybe he can make a statement for the judges that would throw this thing into doubt. clever in this fight, not expending more energy than he has to, not fighting more than he has to. And I think he's winning the 12th round right now, which at the very least will be a small embarrassment for the champion, who prizes his conditioning as his biggest asset. Now Holyfield tries to come back with a statement of his own. Blood flowing, punches flying, Evander Holyfield says, I am a man. And Holmes hits him again with the right hand. Holyfield has got a courageous heart. Here's a man bleeding for the first time. Believe me, it bothers you when you've never had it happen to you. High marks to Larry Holmes for fighting as well as he did. Used all the experience of an old warrior to stay in there for 12 rounds. Evander Holyfield, I believe, won the fight clearly, but isn't likely to get high marks from the drama critics. Great fight, Beautiful. Good job. Come on, let's go. Here. Let's go. So Evander Holyfield continues as the champion who really can't win until he faces a Riddick Bow or a Lennox Lewis or a Razor Ruddock. That is likely to be his identity. Close. You fought your heart out, man. And we'll take another look now at the closing seconds of the bout. 
the moment after the bell as Larry Holmes attempted to adopt the body language of the winner. But instead, vomited into his corner. A lot of water coming out. Shows she'd had some despair. Where's Joe? Well, that's an HBO boxing first, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen it on Monday Night Football. Now you've seen it on HBO World Championship Boxing. Not on a tree. The guy was there to survive. He didn't want to fight. I thought he was going to fight that way. Okay. All right, Harold Letterman, 12 rounds in the books. You tell us how you scored it. Well, Jim, I had a 115, 113, seven rounds to five of Andy Holyfield. Larry made a fight of it in the last three rounds. I want to tell you, I, I gave him credit. I, I just thought that Larry did pretty well coming off the ropes, and Evander sort of slowed up in the last three. But all in all, Evander had the best of it, landed those hard right hands, and I just thought he did too much with his, with his rights and, and his left hooks and took it to Larry most of the fight. Certainly, I couldn't take it away from Evander Holyfield. And final punch stat numbers. Larry Merchant, take us through these. Well, here you see Holyfield threw 40, landed 40 more punches according to the punch stat numbers. Uh, many more hard blows, I believe, than Larry Holmes did. And threw 125 more punches. That may be the critical statistic because he threw those punches coming forward all the time. Exactly. I guess what we have to say here is thankful for that, that elbow because it gave the only drama to this fight that it really had. And right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision. Let's get the decision. Let's get the decision. Come on. Don't put that in there. You know it. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Caesars Palace, we go to the scorecards. Chuck Giampa scores about 116 to 112. That's the same score, 116 to 112 from Carol Castellano. And Glenn Hamada has it, 117 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Real Deal Holyfield. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please, for the great former heavyweights of the world, Larry Holmes. Well, Vander Holyfield once again does his business. Will it be enough to please the boxing public? Probably not. But he did his business under difficult circumstances. And George Foreman, before we go to the ring for Larry Merchant to talk to the champion, you're cut for the first time. You can't see how bad the cut is because you don't get a chance to look in the mirror. You can tell that the people in your corner are nervous about it. What goes through your mind? Probably the first time he's been excited and afraid. He was scared. And I think the people in his corner were scared, too. But if anybody managed to steady the ship, it was Evander, who went and, back into the ring and did his job. And that cut man did a great job. Ace Murata. Now, for our own cut man, Larry Merchant, let's go up to the ring. Thank you, gentlemen. Evander, the most dramatic thing that happened in this fight was an elbow to your right eye with a really severe cut. We're going to show it to you on the monitor. Please describe what you see happen and what you thought happened at that time. I'm throwing the right hand. I'm throwing the right hand, the overhand right. And, uh, and uh, he was kept uh, shielding his right hand. He would catch him with his forearm a lot anyway. And he was, it was a very tricky. He was very tricky. And he used his arms a lot as defense, which, you know, he just caught me with the elbow right on the eye. But you don't think that the elbow was deliberate. It just happened. I don't think he, I don't think he did it on purpose because... Uh, pretty much that's pretty much what his defense is. It was able to stop a lot of my left hook to the head and my overhand rights. He was just able to just throw his hands straight up in there and was able to. All right, now you go into the corner. There's almost panic in the corner because this is a really bad cut. What's running through your mind? Do you feel, are they going to stop this fight? Am I going to be able to go on? Well, not at all. You know, I, you know, I'm a praying man, and I knew that the Lord would work a way out for me. Uh, you know, it, it was amazing that, you know, me being cut and, even though I was cut, I felt better than I ever felt in a whole fight. And it's just like, it was too much joy in my heart. Things wasn't happening the way that I wanted it would happen. I wasn't hitting him with any clean shots. He was very defensive. And, and it was, you know, it really it would have been frustrating, but I was in peace of mind while I was in there. And with the cut, it didn't bother me. The blood didn't get in my eye or anything like that. Some of the grease got in my eye at once. 
But, you know, through it all, you know, I just prayed and just went through it and just took it one Were run. you at all trying to defend that eye? Were you concerned that he was going to try to pick on that eye? Well, not at all. I felt that even though I had this cut eye, now this is my way to hit him with a good shot. I felt that, oh, man, he's going to try to take me out. Now I have an opportunity to, to take him out because the fact is I realize a lot of guys go on defense with me and it's hard for me to get through the shots. It, was that a turning point also in the sense that you started to throw more jabs after that, which your corner had been urging you to do before? Well, you know, McCona was urging me to throw the jab, but Larry Hone is uh, very clever, and when I throw the jab, he just throws his arm up there, and, and I couldn't get a good, clean jab in there and hit him like I really wanted to hit him. Now, earlier in the fight, you got him in the corner, and that was his best round, and that was what you hadn't planned to do. Did you deliberately get away from that for the rest of the fight? Well, yeah, I deliberately. I got away from in the corner because I realized, well, he's, I'm a force defense. I never, never fought anybody with such uh, pretty good defense as Larry Holmes had inside. My punches just glanced off him all the time. Um, do you feel that he was really trying to win the fight? or just basically to fend you off? I, I think he was there just to fend me off. Uh, he didn't really give me nothing to shoot at because he really just only threw two or three uh, jabs and get back to the corner and throw a right hand every now and then. All right, he was just basically trying to survive is what we're saying here. Now let's go to the future, Evander. What are your plans? And Lou, you can jump in here if you want, Lou Dugan. Well, as far as we're concerned, I think, first of all, we're going to give Evander a good rest. I want to make sure we take care of that eye. It's the first time he's ever been Do caught. you feel you have to start fighting the younger fighters and winning to get the credit that you feel you deserve? Well, you know, there's no, no, no doubt about it. There's no old fighters out there now. But the, the issue is uh, Larry Holm and uh, George Foreman's out of the way. Now it's time for, you know, the young fighter. And I think that they'll be more eager to get out there and really try to get me out with problems. So will it be Riddick Bo providing that Bo wins his next fight next month? Oh, well, yeah, that was planned, Anna, but if it worked out between Riddick Bo, Lennox Lewis, uh, Razor Ruddick, that would be one of them young guys. One of the younger guys. We'd like to fight uh, Bo uh, if he's available. We'd like to fight Lennox Lewis. We'd like to fight any one of those air fighters. In, in, in any sense of it, uh, you've won the fight, made a lot of money. It means you're going to make a lot of money the next time. But is it frustrating because you want to look better than a fighter as crafty as Larry Holmes allowed you to look? Well, you know, it's, it's re really hard to say. You know, I wasn't watching the fight. You all were watching the fight, and everybody had an opinion. I go back and look at it, but I realized deep down inside, I fought a smart fight. I fought a guy that really was trying not to get knocked out, and as I explained to you all uh, in my room, that a lot of people just fight me a very defensive fight, and it caused calls that a fight go to distance. Thank you very much, Evander. Congratulati yeah. Congratulations on defending your title. And now, back to Jim and George. All right, thanks very much, Larry. So having now cleaned the division out of 42-year-old former champions with two unanimous decision victories, Holyfield looks ahead toward younger, greener pastures, at least greener in terms of age, if not in terms of dollar return. And what about Larry Holmes? Well, he was an unlikely comebacker at age 42, but ring history shows us that Archie Moore fought 50 fights past the age of 40. Sugar Ray Robinson had 44 fights after his 40th birthday. Does Larry want to emulate those former champions or go fishing? Let's go back to Larry Merchant and find out. Thank you, Jim. Good fight, Larry. A lot. <laughs> Do you feel satisfied that you were able to stay in there with the younger heavyweight champion of the world and uh, give yourself a chance? I'm satisfied with the opportunity that I got to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world at this age. I'm not satisfied because I didn't win. I fought to win. Uh, that's what fighters are supposed to do. Even though we talk about the dollars, but there's more important things in life than money. I have a lot of pride. I have an image I want to uphold. And that would have meant a lot to me and my family and a lot of people that's over 40 around the world. So that's what I was dedicating that fight to, uh, even though a vendor uh, showed a lot of determination, uh, a lot of strength. I mean, he, he's a good man. I just thought I could uh, overcome that. First half of the fight, you were doing pretty well. You won a few rounds. Now, at the end of the sixth round, you throw uh, a punch. You let, your elbow grazes his eye. 
a severe. Oh, no, Larry, with a right hand. Well, I'm sorry. On. We we no, it was it was a, a punch you tried to throw. We saw it on tape many times. It was not a, a deliberate deliberately thrown bad punch. You can watch it right here. He's coming in you. Here comes the right hand. The eye goes right across his brow. Well, I'm very sorry, but I thought the right hand went in there first. Um, we know you didn't do it deliberately, but the point I'm saying is now you go back to your corner, you look across the ring, the heavyweight champion of the world is sitting there with a terrible cut. There's almost panic in the corner. You've won a few rounds. Were you feeling at that point, my God, I'm going to win this thing or I can win this thing? No, my thing was I thought I was going to win when the bell rang. I already was in the cut or anything else. I had anything to do with it. I knew I had to work my way into the position to take advantage of that situation. But Evander was uh, a little cagey. He didn't come in with the, for the jab. I was not able to use the jab like I, I would normally use it. And, uh, you know, the guy just was a, a cagey fighter. He was a determined fighter. And that's something that us heavyweights didn't give him. Is he different in any way than you saw him from outside of the ring? How do you see Evander Holyfield now? Oh, same way I've seen him all the time as a great fighter. As a determined, strong guy that wanted to be a heavyweight champion in the world. I never tried to take anything away from him. I thought he was uh, a good fighter uh, because you had to be that to be the heavyweight champion. All right. Both you and George Foreman have gone the distance with Evander Holyfield. You were the crowd favorites. Will you fight George Foreman, say, in some big farewell to boxing by two great ex-champions? Larry, I never know what I'm going to do. You know how <laughs> Larry's are. We never know. What now we're going to go back home, relax, and jump on the boat and go fishing. You know, if people took more important things serious in life, it would be a shortage of fishing poles. How about a bomb? That's right. <laughs> Larry, it wouldn't be so bad if you went fishing for about 40 more years. Thank you very hey, much. Larry, wait a minute. Hold on. What was that all about? <laughs> Bob, I'm challenging you. I'm going to challenge you. I'll make you laugh. Uh, all right, Jim. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks very much. Well, Larry won't say for sure what his intentions are. What are your intentions? Well, I'm going to box. I got one more year in the ring. My wife gave me. I'm number one contender in the IBF. You negotiated for another year from your wife, and you no, got No, 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 just the end of this year. Uh -huh. I'm number one contender, and uh, they can talk about the young guys all they want, but I'm number one contender. They're going to have to come by, guys. You can't discriminate against a guy's age, especially if they're putting it on you. George, you it's know as well as I do that Evander Holyfield is not going to give his next title defense to you. He's going to have to fight one of the younger contenders. And and there are so you're not going to get that shot by the end of the year. There are some great contenders out there, too. That the only ball. fight you can get at this point is against Larry Holmes. Would you do it? Well, I don't know. Larry Holmes just won one fight. He's going fishing, and I'm going burger hunting. <laughs> the astonishing thing is that you've never met Larry Holmes before in the ring because That's your careers are chronologically parallel. I think there are a lot of people who like a, to see him. He's it. a bit younger than I am, believe it or not. He's a younger guy. So you hear what George has to say and you hear what Larry has to say. We had our own ideas about what happens to the future of the heavyweight division in the wake of this Holyfield victory. Let's look now at how the dominoes may fall in the coming months. With this, the third defense of his title, Evander Holyfield looks down the road. The immediate future of the heavyweight division is his future. A win over Pierre Kutzer next month will make Riddick Bowe the number one contender, the next mandatory challenger for Holyfield. There are those who say Bowe will represent Holyfield's first legitimate title defense. Bowe scored victories over Burt Cooper, Terrell Biggs, and Bruce Selden. His youth, desire, and punching power could conceivably be too much for Evander. Is George Foreman still a contender? In the first Holyfield-Foreman match, many expected a boring mismatch, with Holyfield getting an easy payday against a fat man well past his prime. But the match proved that intensity, guts, and determination are at least as much a factor as age and the circumference of a fighter's waistline. On the other hand, Foreman's recent performance against Alex Stewart shows George may need to bring more than perseverance into the ring. The question is, would the public buy another Holyfield Foreman spectacle? Or perhaps Evander will begin to take a look at three up-and-coming younger contenders who are fighting for recognition and hoping for possible shots at the title. European champion Lennox Lewis, though undefeated, has yet to fully prove himself on American soil. History has shown that British heavyweights have trouble being taken seriously. It's been almost a century since the United Kingdom has had a world heavyweight champion, and its citizens have their hopes invested in Lennox Lewis to bring the crown back to England. 
The most experienced of the three young heavyweight destroyers, a seasoned power puncher with the arrogance of a champion, is Donovan Razor Ruddock. His destruction of Michael Dokes in four rounds and his two spirited bouts with Mike Tyson give Ruddock big fight experience. Some people believe he is just too strong for Holyfield. Another undefeated contender is Michael Moore. This powerful southpaw doesn't back down against tough opponents and has proven his punching power with knockout victories over Alex Stewart and Burt Cooper. With a little more fight experience, Moore could be the man who topples Holyfield's crown. Both Foreman, Lewis, Ruddock, and Moore, all heavyweights knocking on the door of Megabuck fights and potential heirs to the title of world champion. These fighters exhibit the depth of future opposition for Evander Holyfield. All right, so if we haven't said it all yet, we'll have one more crack at it. Your final comments, George, on Evander Holyfield's unanimous decision victory. I think he deserved it. The guy proved that he could fight not only a good fighter, but he can fight a good fighter when he's cut. Not very few champions able to keep their cool in those circumstances. Larry? Well, one thing about some of the younger fighters, when Evander Holyfield fights some of those younger fighters, and I do think that two or three of them are exceptional, and the world would know more about it if the... Uh, the regular networks that showed them more often, we will see the real Evander Holyfield, whether he's as good as we think he is or not as good as we think he is, just as in the same sense that we had a knockout in the Norris Taylor fight because Taylor came to fight and win. And when a young fighter comes to fight and win, that's when you get action and that's when we'll see about Holyfield. Secondly, there has bound to have been by this time a lot of discussions about Holyfield's place, that he's not a very good champion and all that. There is a certain inevitability of that. You just can't get away from it, just as actors are compared for the way they play Hamlet. Uh, I'm reminded that Ernest Hemingway in the old days used to say that he compared himself not just to the fighters who were out there or the writers who were out there, but to the, all the writers who ever lived. And he said it was sort of like the mile runner, that you run against the clock and not just the people there in the ring with you to show how great you are. And Evander Holyfield will get the opportunity to show how great he is when we see him against those young fighters eager to become heavyweight champion. Ernest Hemingway, one of the few writing luminaries ever to compare himself to both writers and fighters, right? Well, and milers. <laughs> and milers. It seems inevitable to me that for the next several months, Evander Holyfield will take more of the same kind of abuse from the boxing press, boxing media, and the boxing public that he has already taken for so many months up to now, that he's not a legitimate heavyweight champion, that he hasn't proven anything in any of his three title defenses, that his wins came against a journeyman and two 42-year-old former champions. For any heavyweight champion, your next title defense is always your most important. Never has it been truer of any heavyweight champion than it is right now of Evander Holyfield. So, we hope you've enjoyed this evening as Holyfield extended his unbeaten record and scored the unanimous decision victory with a massive cut over his right eye against 42-year-old former champion Larry Holmes. And we invite you to be sure to tune in here on HBO to Wimbledon 92. First week's play from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. with a 7.30 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. highlight show. That's the first week. And full match coverage from 5 to 7.30 p.m. with the 7.30 p.m. highlight show during the second week. All of that action through the men's semifinals at the world's greatest tennis tournament. Also, don't miss when it was a game, too. Our look back through original color home movies of baseball past. It premieres Monday, July 13 at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And join us for our next World Championship Boxing Cup.